but this is so much the roots of, of Piper's farm, really, because this was my mum and dad on the farm I was brought up on. This was the first of the industrial chicken, you could call them, really, because it was the beginning of this idea of, of intensive production of, of protein. So mum and dad had these very first chicken houses on the farm, and this was them killing those first chicken, processing them in, in this shed. And, and that, that's the, here's the picture of the farm that I was brought up on. So I think this photo was taken when I was about five. So here was the shed where they killed those chickens in the very, very early days. These were the sheds where we kept the pigs. And these chickens, in, in those days, they were all going to the, the family food shops, the David Gregg shops. Here's a picture, 1958, the Ideal Home Exhibition, David Gregg proudly displaying. It was a, it was a really important part of the, the high street, those David Gregg shops. And so that was very much my early childhood was on that little mixed farm in Kent, part of this system of, of supplying the shops. I remember though Christmases particularly, I'd go and help dad loading all the frozen turkeys onto the lorries from the, the freezer stores to be delivered to the shops. And he said to me, whatever happens, you'll have to gear yourself up for coping with Christmas because at Christmas time, you've got to get it right. If you supply food, make sure your business can look after your customers at Christmas time because it really, really matters. So when Henry and I came here in 1989, we knew we wanted to try and, and build a, another version, really, of, of the way food could be supplied. We'd seen the way supermarkets had dominated. That original vision that my great-grandfather had had of small food shops connected almost definitely to small farmers and a really special relationship with local customers. That had really gone with the advent of supermarkets. And so when Henry and I came here with the two small boys in 1989, we had a determination to produce a new vision for how we could get the best of what my great-grandfather and my grandfather and, and father had been running in those David Gregg shops. But when we landed here, this was literally what was on the farm. This was the, the tin sheds where they were milking the cows. And there really was nothing else more substantial on the farm. So we, we kitted out the inside of the cow sheds. When we arrived, there were four cows tied up here, and there were three in the bottom, seven in the top. And this was it. This was literally where I did the butchery, Henry did all the packing, the boys would be playing on a carpet. And then we eventually employed our first employee was a chef, and we hoped he would be able to understand how meticulously we wanted to butcher the, the meat and make the most of these animals that, as farmers, we cared so deeply about. We didn't just want it to be any old butchery. We wanted it to be Piper's farm butchery, and, and so Bob was the, the first guy we employed. And that first Christmas, Henry and I loaded the, 
12 turkeys we'd grown in the orchard into the chest trees or on the back of our car and drove all the way from Devon up to London, down into Kent, back through Hampshire, onto Dartmoor, to deliver the 12 turkeys to our very first 12 customers. And then we started to try and, I don't know, I guess, spread out. We, we had this vision that we were going to, to grow more and more customers and, and we started sending out newsletters. This is one from 1995, our Christmas survival pack cooking guidelines. And then Yeah, the hams, the turkeys, the Christmas poultry selection. Actually, that year, we'd won the, the rosette as the best butcher in Henrietta Green's Food Lover's Guide to Britain. And wow, we, we just thought, this is so exciting. It, it set us on a a journey, but there was so much work still to do. We, we just were determined to try and engage with the local farming community. We knew that pipers would always be about harnessing this magic of the local family farmers. And, and in this part of Devon, this incredible landscape, wonderful family farms. But so many of them had, they'd almost lost that magic, where they almost all would have produced Christmas poultry. They would have sold a few potatoes. They would have had lots of different enterprises, some sheep often one of the local Devon native breeds, the long wool or the close wool, they would have loved keeping a flock of those sheep. And then they probably would have had some saddleback pigs and some red ruby cattle. But that was disappearing so fast. But Henry and I knew that was part of our vision, but we had to work pretty hard to convince those families that what we could see so clearly actually was going to be a realistic answer to what was happening in their farming lives. They were being pressured to produce more and more industrial commodity. They weren't keeping their few sheep or they weren't keeping a small herd of pigs running in the cider orchard. They almost certainly weren't keeping Christmas poultry. That was disappearing fast. And so we wanted to connect with them and excite them with the idea that we could really, we could feel it was going to work. We knew our customers believed in what we were doing. 